This is a tutorial about the cantillation for uh, Megillas Esther, uh, and I'll be speaking in a normal English, traditional Ashkenazi pronunciation. I'm going to make a few points about how to read the Megillah, and then I'll go through all the notes. The first point to make is that like uh, all learning, Torah learning and Haftarah learning, the reading is divided up into uh, uh, sentences, and each sentence, each posok, is divided in half. The halfway point is marked by a phrase that normally runs mercho tipcho munach es nachta. And the es nachta has a sign which is a sort of upside down Y. That will be the halfway point, sort of halfway point, uh, in, the, uh, in the sentence. The end of the sentence is marked by a sign which is the sof posuk, literally the end of the sentence. And that is a vertical stroke. Now, you need to look out for those while you're reading, because it's easy to mistake the mercho tipcho munach es nachta for the mercho tipcho mercho sof posuk. The indication that the halfway point or the end of the posuk is coming up, let's say the es nachta or the sof posuk, the indication that's coming up will be the pair of signs, usually the mercho tifcho. The mercho sign is a sort of quadrant of a circle from east to south, and the tifcho sign is the quadrant of a circle from south to west. And these signs are below the words. And when you see these signs, your eye needs to scan ahead quickly and look out for the es nachto or the sof posuk, because mercho tifcho are sung differently according to whether they appear before es nachto or before sof posuk. And this is what I mean. If mercho tipcho introduce es nachto, they'll sound like this. Mercho tipcho munach es nachto. But if they're introducing the soft posuk, they'll sound mercho tipcho, mercho soft posuk. Now, those are pretty similar, but they're not the same, and you have to make them different. Mercho tipcho munach es nachto. Mercho tipcho. Just to make it a bit more complicated, mercho sometimes doesn't appear. So you may find yourself just looking for the second sign in, in that pair of twins, tifcho, in which case, if the esnachto were to follow, it would be tifcho munach esnachto. And if it was the sof posuk that followed, it would be tifcho mercho sof posuk. You see, in the case of the first one, it only goes down one note. Tivcha. In the case of the second one, it goes right down to Tivcha. You hear the difference? Tivcha. In the case of Esnachta. Tivcha. In the case of Sof Posuk. Just to make things a little bit more complicated again, the Munach may be missing before Esnachta. So you may be singing Mercha Tivcha Esnachta. And similarly, with uh, the phrase before Sof Posuk, the second Mercho may be missing. So you may be singing Mercho Tifcho Sof Posuk. And if both Merchos are missing, so that all you see is the Tifcho and Sof Posuk, then you'll be singing Tifcho Sof Posuk. Now, even if Mercho is missing, Tifcho will always appear before Sof Posuk. In the same way, even if mercho is missing in the phrase that runs up to esnachto, the sign tifcho will always appear before esnachto. You can never have an esnachto without a tifcho before it. The only question is whether there's a mercho before the tifcho. Now, one other point to make about these two phrases that close either the first half of the posuk or the second half is that they're both in a minor key. Everything else about the cantillation for Megillus Esther is in a major key. Pretty well everything is in a major key. And that major tone is set by the most familiar opening phrase, often appearing at the beginning of a sentence, but sometimes buried slightly after the start. And that is this phrase. Ma pach pashta zokev karton. And just about everything in Megillus Esther will be in that key. Now, this is the third phrase, if you like, that you'll find in the Tameha Mikra, in the cantillation. And it's the last of the three phrases, in the sense that there are only three phrases that occur. Everything else, 
All the other signs that appear are signs that ornament particular words or perhaps a pair of words, very occasionally three words. So normally while you're singing you'll be looking out for individual words with signs on them and phrases. And rather like the Merchotivcha phrases, Mapach Pashtaz Okev Koton can also appear with a missing first sign. The Mapach can be missing. In the same way as with the Merchot Tivchot phrases, you'll be looking ahead, your eye will be scanning ahead to see whether the phrase ends esnach to, in the middle of the line, or sofposuk, at the end of the line. So, when you see the chevron of mapach, your eye will quickly look ahead and look for the sign on the koton, the two dots above the word. But sometimes you won't see a mapach. Your eye will scan ahead and you'll see the two dots, but it won't be introduced by mapach. It will be introduced instead by pashto, sometimes only by zokeif. So you could get mapach pashto zokeif koton. Or if the mapach is missing, pashto zokeif koton. Or if both the mapach and the pashto are missing, then simply zokeif koton. And sometimes the phrase may be introduced by a repeated pashto. So it'll be pashto mapach pashto zokev koton. Pashto mapach pashto zokev koton. Rather in the same way as the mercho tifcho phrases, pashto must always lead to koton. There may or may not be a zokev in between. But mapach can never appear without pashto following. In fact, just to make things slightly complicated, there is another sign which looks like mapach. It's called yesiv. And there are a couple of different ways of singing it. It can be yesiv or it can be yesiv. Different people do them in different ways. You have a completely free hand, as far as I can see, to choose whichever one you think leads in better to what is going to follow. And that's often the way with this cantillation. Some phrases depend upon the note which is to follow. And here I have to introduce you to munach. Munach is a little symbol that sits under the word and it looks like a backwards capital L. Munach can sound differently according to the note that follows it. So in the case of zarko and segol, which are the only two other notes which are in the minor key, zarko goes Zarka. And if you get a munach before it, it goes munach zarka. But segol goes segol. The segol sign, by the way, is the little the three dots, which look a bit like a bunch of grapes upside down. And there, if there's a munach before the segol, they go munach segol. So there, you see, the two munach sound completely different. Here are two other examples of munach. You can get munach before the note revere. Revere is a sort of diamond shape above the word. Revere goes, and we're now back into the majors because everything else is in a major key. Revere. So if you get a munach before that, it goes, munach, revere. But sometimes you get two munachs before it, in which case they'll sound... Munach, Munach, Revia. There we have in total four different Munachs. And unfortunately, you'll have to learn them in the context, as I say, of the note that follows. You've now done most of the hard work, and the only question that's left is what all the other notes sound like. I'll now go through them all. Ma pach pach ta zokev koton, munach zarka, munach segol, munach, munach revia, zokev kodol. Pose Talisha Gadola Talisha Katana Kadmovia's law Oslo Geresh 
Gershayim Darga Tavir And Tavir can appear by itself there. Tavir Yesiv Or alternatively Yesiv Muna Karne Fara Munach Yerech ben Yomo Mercho Tivcho Mercho Sov Pasuk Tivcho Mercho Sov Pasuk And that's it. You're all ready to go. Purim Sameach.